told the police that you were chased by a woman. I think I'm crazy. Okay, so thank you guys so much. I have both Josh and Ken of Waypoint Entertainment. We're here to discuss their upcoming films, uh, Cuckoo, uh, the actor, as well as their insight and experience in the film industry. First thing I wanted to talk about is this film, right? It's, it's a really wild movie um but you guys are known for some different movies you guys are known for like the nice guys you guys are known for hostels like what really drew waypoint entertainment to this type of film can you want me to take it away oh well i guess yeah well I'm, i blame josh for this movie so yeah that's my like... <laughs> i think look i think the only constant you have in in all of our films is like we're just very filmmaker driven and we had seen Tillman's film Lose, uh, which was his student thesis film in art school um, in Cologne, Germany. And uh, uh, he shot that on 16 millimeter for like no money. And it was just pretty mind blowing. And I mean, that, that movie is just pure vibes. And and, uh, and I remember seeing a, uh, a like a review on Rotten Tomatoes of Lose and someone was like, I don't know what I just saw, but someone get him more money to do it again. And I kind of just like took that as my rallying cry, uh, like met him over Zoom. And and I think it's just, you know, I think we really like films that combine different genres and tones. And that's what Luz did and what Cuckoo does. You know, it, it's like pretty hard to categorize, um, it, but it's fun, you know, um, and he, he wants to make bold films, but films that also people will go see. So. I think that that's kind of like the sweet spot for everything we're looking for. Now, Waypoint, you guys have worked on like a diverse range of projects from like dramas to comedies. You have the actor coming up. What What is it about a particular project that you find attractive that says, OK, this is the one I want to invest my time into? Well, I, I, I'll piggyback up what Josh said a little while ago. Um, Filmmaker driven, uh, I think in that vein um, and there's obviously many many filmmakers but you know i think this day and age what we're looking for are filmmakers who have a point of view who have a voice uh, who aren't afraid to take swings at uh, um, you know creating something or pushing a genre forward or, um you know those are the those are the types of films that i uh, that's have stayed with me over the years and um you know i, I i've said this on some occasions and, and uh, josh is probably probably laughs at me saying it over and over again but you know i i, rem I remember filmmakers that that you almost know what their movies are when they're in like another room like you're in another room or something or or like you could be focused on something else and you could you could tell that, that that that's one of their movies you know and and um obviously those are unicorns but and but you know it takes a lot to get a movie made and uh if you don't have that uh motivation or aspiration uh when you're in development to to get there uh you'll never you'll never get there you know so i think we're when we when we start looking we're looking for those type of people with that in their dna okay okay now ken your your role at waypoint you know you you have the creative and you have the financial aspects how do you how do you strike that balance between artistic integrity and commercial viability when selecting your projects well, when you figure it out, let me know, okay? <laughs> I try to find uh, art and commerce, the intersection of that. I mean, that's the holy grail, right? I mean, they call it the film business, right? So, I think if I could, if it, if I if, if I had my druthers, and all I did was was uh, collect, <laughs> you know, things or not not collect, but you know, shepherd art that had no bearing on on how to keep the lights on you know like a, it'd be a lot easier but i think uh, you know finding the art in 
um, reaching audiences, uh, creating financial viability for our company or our movies. Um, I mean, that's that's an art in, it, in itself, right? So you just you try, and I think we've definitely learned a lot of things over the last decade and a half. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you got, the answer, I'm answering the question without really answering it. My, my <laughs> answer to it is that, you know, I think for those that are greatly successful in this game of producing and filmmaking, um, they have an eye of how to connect with audiences. And, and I think um, it's something that I'm humbly still trying to uh, hone in on myself after all these years. <laughs> and I'm just grateful to still be standing on you know, this business thank you for that now i kind of want to shine the spotlight on josh for a second because you know in the same vein of trying to find art or an artist to develop you have a background in music as well so how does your passion for music influence or your experience in the music industry influence your approach to filmmaking? Like, are there any parallels between the two or anything that you find particularly intriguing? Well, the, yeah, the music experience was because I was in a, a, a hardcore, like, screamo band uh, back in the day. So I, uh, yeah, you know, that, that didn't work out. So I fell back onto film. But no, I, I think that, like... <laughs> You know, always just been drawn to both film and music. And I think that like music plays such an integral part in every single film. Um, and I think that the music I was playing was maybe a little too niche, you know, not to be successful. But I think it it it's it's always just trying to find like how can we push the boundaries of these while respecting the skeletal like genre components, you know? Um, you know, because I think, especially in the, in the, like we, 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 we span all budget levels. And I think that, but we, we try to focus on these, like, you know, kind of larger indie films. They're the ones that are really able to make more of a statement. It's kind of like the forgotten, like the studios aren't making these sub $50 million films anymore. Really. It's like, just seems like increasingly, like it's just the two hundred million dollar films. It's kind of like our 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 whole bit used to be like it was saying what Cord Jefferson said at his you know um, Oscar speech where he was just talking about for one two hundred million dollar film you go make twenty films and you know I think that that's what you know we can talk about it later but like our whole partnership with Neon it's like all about like how can we just be pushing the genre uh, you know for films that people will go see and and just try to make more interesting content and you know. And then if I, I can find a way to get Screamo music into our films, well, that's great. But, you know, few and, few and far between the, where that'll work. So you guys have worked on a lot of different projects. And you you also have, like, uh, the actor, right? That's something that you guys have coming up that you're executive producing alongside Ryan Gosling and, and Charlie Kaufman. What, what drew you to that story? And where does that fall into, I guess, your projected budget? Um, well, I mean, I'll answer the easy question first. I think the budget it was it's a contained indie, uh, smaller to mid sized film. Um, you know, I think creatively that's something that you know aligns with our some of our former partners like Neon, who, who um, uh, Josh mentioned earlier. And then at the time when we were trying to set it up, there were all our other uh, smaller or mid mid-sized studios that were circling it to their engage, especially when Ryan was attached to acting it. Um, I, I, yeah, um, you know, I mean, if you, if you know about that movie and have done your research, you know, uh, Duke Johnson's uh, previous feature film, Anomalisa. And, um, you know, one would know that, you know, obviously he's a men mentee of, Charlie Kaufman, so you can kind of see that whole sphere of influence. And um, when we talk about uh, filmmakers with, with um, you know, strong voices and and uh, visions, um, I definitely feel like Charlie falls into that that category, right? So, um, you know, at the time when when 
Ryan and I had talked about the actor. It was just a, a damn good script, you know. I, I think uh, it was, um, it was uh, you know, something that when you read this many scripts in, in our business, you know, something when you read something that stands out, um, um, it, it, it's kind of obvious. And I think Josh, you know, reads more scripts than I do these days, so he could certainly confirm that. I think. But I think you know the actor was just when I read it personally, I, I thought it was. Um, there's a lot of heart in it, you know, and I, I think God, it, it was, um, it was, a, it was a, a film that was, wasn't afraid to try to be vulnerable and, and, and connect with, um, people on a human level, which again, I mean, not to kind of beat the drum over and over again, just, I don't see that in our industry, uh, the stuff that people are pumping out these days, they just don't it's the minority you know and um and so i think that immediately stood out and um i think that's what stood out to most of the people that got involved with this film is that it you know again gave you a chance to really you know talk about you know the human condition you know and uh, get get personal thank you for that now you, you touched on a little bit something about like the human condition and almost like a human relation with folks. Now, I'm going to ask some kind of different questions because I think it's really important for audiences to understand what it is that you do and to find that relation with you. Um, I know that the film industry, it's constantly evolving, right? There's new technologies, there are new distribution platforms, and it's just changing everything. What are some of the biggest challenges that you encounter um, with the industry changing? And what do you, what are some of the things that you're learning to do to stay ahead of the curve? Mm -hmm. Josh, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, I look, it's all, it's too, I'll jump in. It, yeah, I mean, I think it's getting, frankly, projects greenlit and financed um, in the independent film sector unless you have an extremely, like our next thing going into production is, you know, a massive MGM, Amazon film, probably Tail Mary, you know, huge, huge budget. But for everything else that's, you know, filmmaker driven independent content, there are just, you know, having come from, we were, you know, a film financier producer back in the day, that there are not many film financiers writing equity checks anymore. And um, you know, the actor and Cuckoo, those were fully financed by Neon. Uh, and I think just looking at what our pathway was going to be towards getting our slate financed, it was like clear that we wanted to partner with someone like Neon to help greenlight more films together, including our own. But I think that supporting these mini major companies like Neon is the best way to to get these films financed because it's just it's a very unstable market it used to be like you would go finish a film premiere it at sundance and you had an eight percent chance of selling it now like you know sales agents are bringing films to festivals and nothing sells so it's not sustainable and it's very so it's it's just you have to be working with these studios earlier in the game and we were just so impressed by the experience of working with Neon that, um, and how they empowered us and greenlit two of our films that we really wanted to kind of help empower them and, and be their partner on, on both the creative and financial side. So I think that's the one way we're kind of trying to adjust, you know, at least in the indie sector. Okay. Now, um, I had the pleasure of attending the South by Southwest Film Festival and attending a panel where they discussed um, as a filmmaker, as a, even from the writing stage, determining what's the best way to tell your story, narrative versus documentary, right? Depending on what they're trying to tell, there might be a lane that fits. Something that I've noticed more recently is this almost hybrid type of film coming out. We saw like, I think a couple years ago on Netflix, they had The Social Dilemma and then even more recently with Ava DuVernay's film Origin, um, films are starting to toe the line between being a narrative and a documentary. Um, as From a production standpoint, how does that 
change your process when either choosing to adapt a film or getting a film made? Does it help at all? Does it hurt at all? Is it uncharted territory? Or is it something, you know, it's still new? I think uh, I think it's all just problem solving, frankly. And like, it's like what Ken did on Lost in London. Like, I like it, it's, you know, I don't know if you know about the film, but like Ken could speak on it if he, if he wants to, but like, that's it's all just about what's the what's the like you know production technical challenges and they all have their own and like that's just merging different types of production into one and i mean ken did that on lost in london um i guess that'd be mine <laughs> yeah um uh, Anthony, just to be clear, are, are you asking bit that more on a creative level, or for you know, in terms of like how the how the, how these type of films have uh, stake me in our business in our industry these days? The latter, more so, how it has a standing in the industry and the business these days. Like when filmmakers are creating their projects, a lot of times, I'm at least what I'm told on a filmmaker is that they sometimes have a story that could toe the line between either becoming a documentary or it can be a narrative film now does and, and what i'm seeing are there are some films that are actually towing the line and you know i don't know if you've seen the social dilemma or origin but they're they're definitely hybrid films they'll have a narrative aspect to it but then there are t significant portions of the film that are more in line with a traditional documentary and you know, if if this is something that's come across your desk, if not, that's fine. I'm, I'm curious if it has. What's been your experience with get, trying to get these types of films or looking at these types of films? What's your reaction to these types of new, uh, I, I guess, subgenre of film? Right. I see. Thanks. Um, thanks for clarifying. Well, look, I, I, Josh can confirm, but I don't know that I've had any of those types of films uh, come across my desk yet. Um, at least nothing that's been uh, pitched that way in script or by filmmaker. Uh, this is the approach that we're, we're, you know, I plan on taking. Right? I think when we did Lost in London, uh, and and you know, I think that speaks to a bigger a, a bigger picture of how, how Waypoint or myself how I would like to do things is that you know we we never really look to necessarily replicate uh what other people are doing sure you know we're inspired by what others are doing and and um we take inspiration and, and references from that right uh, um but i think um you know especially with somebody like woody um you know he definitely has that right like let's go for it let's swing <laughs> and um um, you know, so it was never about, I, I think that all kind of fits in that spirit of how do we kind of push the limits of what we're doing, okay. uh, rather than, you know, being followers. And, uh, and, and so I think that, um, you know, again, I, to tie that all together, I've not necessarily had this kind of show sub genre be pitched to me. Um, but I'm surprised that, you know, there, there's this growing space and, you know, there will be people that I think do it successfully and unsuccessfully, you know? So I think, uh, it'd be interesting to see how that grow. Thank you. Yeah, I think we are. We haven't seen that, but I think now that I understand, sorry for completely answering easy <laughs> question, the completely wrong way. Um, I think that if there is something that's kind of somewhat that we do see it is, you know, people that are, that are trying to comment on a current issue or something in the zeitgeist and they basically tell a narrative story that is so aligned with what we're experiencing on the news and everyday life. And those, those, when I see those, I'm, I'm usually like, we like why do you want to do it this way like this this should be a documentary because mm -hmm. we're seeing on the news and people are not going to want to at least in this moment in time 
going to want to see a like one-to-one -one narrative version of a very intense current issue or something they're already getting their fill from that from the news and it's you know probably causing a lot of stress and drama just from that and i think that the scripts that are the most interesting are the ones that are talking about a current issue but packaging it into a genre like i always talk about like children of men you know talking about immigration but through this sci-fi story and so i think the most impactful films are the ones that are kind of just putting that you know current issue in subtext um and that's how you can uh you know i think affect more change frankly you know so um i think that's important so that's probably the closest we're getting um to what you're talking about thank you thank you that that really helps me now i i just have one last question again i, I want to be respectful of your time and, and this one is a little bit of a tough one too so if we have to if we don't want to talk on this one yet that's fine um with the ascension of ai I you set them up with degree of difficulty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know i i try to keep it interesting and i and i definitely want to keep it fun if possible um but you know with the ascension of ai it's having an impact on the industry right specifically i'm curious about text to video thing like sora and what open ai is doing it, I feel like it's going to have a huge impact on the lower to medium scale budget projects. And I'm wondering, you know, how are you as filmmakers, at, as producers looking at the ascension of text to video? Um, and is this something that you're you're evaluating for use in future projects? Well, I barely know how to use my iPhone. So this <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I mean, look, it's all happening so fast, but the way I've seen AI, at least in our on our professional side of the industry, is is you know as a tool, you know that like VFX vendors are using it now. I don't even know licensing implications of using Sora content. Um, because look, uh, we are look maybe we pivot, but we are in the business of making like high quality, professional, polished, you know, films. And I think that there is still a long way to go and, uh, but we're definitely in the business of working with humans. Um, so, you know, I think we have to see what happens and if there's an applicable use of it, I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's also the, like the scariest thing is we just have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, the AI is moving so fast, rather unregulated, like. In a year, we could all be working for, you know, robots. I don't know. It's... <laughs> Extra 10 points for the commitment for working with humans. I really appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. All I'll say is that uh, Jim Cameron had it all figured out way back when. <laughs> don't trust the robots. Don't trust them. No. Hit it out for Skynet, yeah. <laughs> well, I've... Thank you so much for that. Uh, I really appreciate that. Even for my own education, I feel like it's a um, it's an interesting conversation. And I think the more that it's an open conversation, the more people will become more comfortable with talking about it. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, that that was the last question I had for this interview, Josh. Ken, I really appreciate your time. Um, if there's any closing words or any anything that you want to say to my audience, um, besides go see, you know, the, the actor and, and Cuckoo, um, anything that you'd like to say? Oh, no, just thank you so much for your time, man, Anthony. Uh, really appreciate you and um, love the movie blog. So thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. And I, I hope to speak to you guys again soon when, when it's time to do the uh, press rounds for the actor. I'd love to speak with you guys again. Thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.